Hi guys, it's Ramon Goose here. And, you know, generally I talk about other people's amps and guitars and stuff. Um, so this time I'm going to talk about my own rig, <laughs> if I may be so bold. <laughs> um, basically, I have two amplifier rigs um, to cover kind of the range of stuff that I do. But essentially, I'm doing kind of world music with my film and sound amps, which I will talk about in a minute. And then I'm doing the more sort of blues rock thing with um, uh, Mystic Blues amps, which are kind of overdrive special style amps. I have two filmer sounds, these two here, which are made by Bill Crenard, and then the the Mystic Blues amps are made by Tommy Cougar. And Tommy Cougar and Bill Crenard were kind of, back in the day, you know, on the Robin Ford forums, we'd be talking about Steve Ray Vaughan's um, Steel String Singers um, and uh, the Robin Ford Overdrive Special. And, and the two names that came up where you could get these amps a bit more cheaper, or a lot cheaper, were Tommy Cougar and Bill Crenard. And those were kind of the two guys that were you know, um, you know, making a, a copy or a clone, if you were, um, of these amps. And uh, so that's how I, I came, first came across Bill and Tommy. And since I've kind of become friends with them both, which is really amazing. And they're both really nice guys. Um, but anyway, uh, the reason I have two is I'm doing like a world music sort of um, set up um, kind of style music, which is a lot of Raikuda slide and uh, some Cuban and other influences and African influences. And so for that, for me, if the kind of venues I'm playing are small venues or art centers. And so the film sounds work really well, more sort of ambient sounds. And and I have two because um, it spreads the sound out, makes it more ambient. And also, you know, the old amps, if one goes down, I've got another one, you know. So this kind of uh, benefits, a lot of benefits for having two amplifiers. And they're pretty small things. The cabinets that go with them are big, actually. So in here, this cabinet here is a 3x10. And it's got three eminent blue, uh, blue speakers, which were used in 90s Fender amps like um, the Vibro King, which was, a, I think it was a custom shop amp. And I really like these, and, and, and I think some um, the Blues Deluxes use them and Basements and, and stuff um, use these Eminence Blue speakers. And I like them to the, I prefer them to the Jensen's. I think sometimes the Jensen's can be a little bit brittle, especially if they're not worn in. So the Eminence are just a bit more forgiving um, and they nice sound. So, so this cab here is actually goes with this amp and that's a three by 10. And that's, so this amplifier here is a 240 volt, very rare model. 240 volts, EL84, um, and it's it's really rare as well because Bill Crenard put a, an EF86 tube in the preamp, and normally this particular model, because they only made this for one year, this 240 volt model in 1965, I think, it doesn't normally come, it comes with a solid state, um, sort of V1 style preamp, whatever, circuitry. So that, so when Bill did the mods on this, he put that EF86 back in there, which is really cool. Um, and so this one here is a 120 volt, or is it a 117? I can't remember now. And this is like an American voltage, 1950s, uh, mid 50s, 6v6. And this is driving, the cabinet's not here, but it's driving a 115 inch um, roller. No, it's not a roller Celestian, it's a roller speaker from the 60s. The earlier ones were, are, um, which are non ribbed, um, non ribbed speaker cones. Um, they're a little bit um, weak sounding. So I use the, the ribbed one, which is a 60s. It's got a slightly bigger Alnico magnet on it. To be honest, it's not an amazing speaker and you'd probably be better off getting a 15 inch Jensen if you can find one for this kind of style amp. Um, you know, I might even get, a, you know, something else. I might get a WGS or, um, you know, maybe something else um, eventually, but that's what's in that cab at the moment. But that, that cab goes with the 6V6. So, um, and the way these, uh, the way I can have these amps both on at the same time is I had to have some kind of a, well, I, originally I built a pedal, um, my own pedal, uh, if I can find it here. Yeah, here it is. So originally I built a little myself, just built this little bit of circuitry here, which is active. And this is the way I, I split the signal, you know, with an, it's got an op amp in there. Um, and, uh, but that kind of didn't work so well. So, what I did was because um, Raikuda has a device called a Green Man. It's built by um, uh, I think Danny McKenney from um, Requisite Audio, and um, so I wanted something similar. And I kind of knew what it was. I kind of knew what I knew more or less what it was, but I, I didn't want to copy 
here's one, you know, because I don't believe, you know, you should come up with your own ideas. But basically, it does exactly the same thing as Danny's, Danny's uh, Green Man, you know. But Danny's Green Man thing is his own thing. And this thing is called the Goose Master. And it, and it does its own thing. I mean, it's kind of similar and the switches are the same, but the um, what's inside, um, I'm, you know, it's probably a bit different, but it functions in the same way, you know. And that's that gives it a bit of sparkle. It also fixes any problems as well. So say, for example, the amps are too trebly or, you know, there's not enough sparkle or the phase is wrong. Uh, you know, this is kind of like a problem solver um, device. And you can always get a really cool tone. And as well, you've got two tubes in there. You've got a 12AX7 and you've got a 12BH7. Um, and and those, those tubes kind of just give it a bit of a push and um, it just makes the whole thing sound really beautiful. So really, that, that's what I kind of tend to use all the time, you know. And then you've got this big dial on top. And depending, you know, as Raikuda says, you know, sometimes you have a guitar which is really hot um, and sometimes you have a Japanese guitar which is really weak. The pickups are weak, so you can just you know, control both of the amps with this just one knob, you know, which is fantastic, you know. So that's kind of, um, you know, it's a total, you know, it's like Raikuda had one, so I want to have one. <laughs> you know, it's kind of that situation, but actually it, it really is a very useful device. And you could probably get something, you know, in, in a box as, you know, smaller than this that does the same thing. But um, for me, I think this just sounds fantastic. It sounds really, really good. So it kind of adds to the whole thing um and uh what's feeding both of these amps is the um victoria reverberamo so that that feeds these these amplifiers um and gives them uh reverb you can see at the moment i'm not using a wet dry rig um but that can change you know this i think i love wet dry rigs there's some amazing uh, artists out there that use that to uh, an amazing effect um, uh, I'm not doing it at the moment. I'm just running a, a pretty much, you know, it's, it's not really a stereo as in, it's just a mono sound coming out of two amps, you know? Okay. So th that reverberamo basically, um, feeds the two filmer sound amplifiers, um, gives it reverb. You, you've got the vibrato effect as well, vibrato effect rather. And, uh, it's just a really lush reverb. You're going for some more tubes. You're going through, you know, if you think about the, the, the chain, you're going through two tubes with the goose master. Obviously, you've got tube amps, and then you, you've got a load of tubes. You know, if you're going through the reverb and the vibrato effect, you've got one, two, three, four, five, five tubes there, plus two tubes on the goose mask. So you're going through seven tubes before you even hit the amps, you know. So that's kind of, that's to explain the vibe that of, of, of what, what I'm, where I'm coming from and where, what I want to have from this, this setup. Um, at the moment, speaker-wise, I'm missing a couple of cabs. I'm missing my 1x12 cabinet, and I'm missing my my other cabinet. So... Basically, in this, in the back of this cabinet here, it's got a 110 Eminence Blue. So that's what all I'm using today. I'm using, a, actually, I'm using a, yeah. So I'm using this cabinet and, and a 110, and that's what you're going to hear in a minute of both these when I do a demonstration of both of these amps together. And this Eminence Blue speaker is just like, for example, if I have to do a gig where I need to um, travel with one of these Filmer Sound cabinet sort of amps, I can just literally take that that by the hand and I've got the amplifier and a 10 um, a 10 inch speaker in the back there so I can do the gig you know so that's kind of the situation with that um, and then coming to the the pedal board uh, I, I have a very minimal for this kind of style of music that I'm doing it's, it's really just about letting the guitars having a great tone and then pretty much letting the guitars do the talking rather than swamp it with loads of crazy effects but what, what, what I am using is I'm using a Texas Flood. This is the first prototype of the Texas Flood pedal I ever built. And then over here, we've got, um, uh, it's basically an AC128 transistor fuzz face because I really love um, using fuzz faces for the CUDA casters. I think they just gel really well together. And then this is kind of really another another piece of kit that Raikuda used, which, is, uh, which I love. It's called the Echo Nugget. And uh, by Crucial Audio, and this is my always-on pedal. This gives me a slapback delay, which I have on all the time. So that's basically part of the the kind of the reverb from the reverb ammo. And you've got the Goose Master always on, and you've got the Crucial Audio on. So when, if I just just have a clean sound, you know that's that's my clean tone. But also this has got tubes in it, so effectively you're adding one or two, depending if you have the boost engaged. You're adding another two tubes again. So you're going through quite a few tubes here. 
Um, well, the one pedal that's missing here is a Quicksilver delay, and uh, I don't know where that is at the moment, but but that's um, another pedal that Rikuda has, and which I love. It's a really amazing ambient delay pedal, and um, and I use that just for a certain amount, a, f a few songs in the set. Not not it's not an all, um, always on pedal. It's only used sometimes. So when I when I want a bit of you know I play a blues song called Long Rose to Tisnit, and it's kind of like a Hendrixy sort of John Lee Hooker sort of tune, and I and I really like to put the ambient delay on that. <clears throat> so that's what it's really useful for. So there, there you go. That's basically the rig um, for the kind of the world music stuff I do, and and let's just have a look at some guitars with that I use with this rig. Okay, so this is my beautiful guy tone. Um, I think it's called a two hundred and twenty. I can't even remember now. Is it two? I think it's called a two twenty. Can't really can't remember, but or two hundred. Um, this guitar here was really the the Cadillac, the top of the range of um, Japanese guy tone guitars at the time. This is nineteen sixty five. So this is kind of really the oldest guitar that I that I own. Um, and really, this this is I use kind of tend to use this guitar. It's it's for standard tuning, and I do the Latin or Cuban or cumbia tunes um, in the band, and that's what I use um, for those songs. It's kind of spaghetti western sound sort of songs that I do, are all done with this guitar. It's got a lot of buttons on there. My good friend Henry Kaiser is very jealous of that about that. Um, and we actually check out the video. I'll put it in the link of um, fetish guitars that Henry and I did, and you can you can hear this in in action on that video um but what i've done I've, I've i got the the frets and i got this steve ray vaughan six what i call the steve ray vaughan <coughs> the 6100 um, fret wire jim dunlop and this just makes it a lot more playable i'm very lucky with this particular guitar because it only weighs just over nine pounds um i think it's nine and a half yeah i think it's weighs nine and a half pounds or a bit no less less maybe nine and a quarter but I know that some of them weigh over 10 pounds. And also the nuts are very skinny, like sort of 39 millimeters or 40 millimeter nuts. But this has got a really wide nut. It's like 43, 44 millimeters. So it's a fantastic nut. It's I just kind of locked out. It's, it's kind of one of the lighter ones and a nice wide neck. So it's a beautiful neck. It's quite chunky as well. So it's kind of a strange neck, but you really get used to it. So this guitar is very, very playable. This pickup here is, is quite possibly the you know in terms of gold foil pickups this is the f my favorite pickup i've ever heard and if i ever saw one of these going on its own i would snap it up you know and, you know i would pay any money for it but the, this this one pickup here on this particular guitar sounds incredible these are two stereo pickups so half the pickup works there half the pickup that works there the uh, of course the idea of this guitar was that you had two outputs these strings went to one amp and these strings went to another amp but i don't use it like that i just use it purely in a mono situation Okay, up next is the Cuda Caster. This one I built many years ago, um, many, many years ago, way before they kind of became fashionable. And um, you can read about this one on the gear page even because I used to post on the gear page about this. It's got a navigator neck on on, on here. Um, this neck is just incredible. You know, navigators just make just best strat necks. In my opinion, they're just really nice. The finish is a little bit kind of, I think it's a kind of a strange nitro poly mix i don't know what it is but apart from that just a, it's a beautiful fretboard beautiful work i might eventually get this refretted to 6100 fret wire because i i just like that thick fret wire it's got an original tiesco gold foil and an, an original 50s a valco and it's as near as the, to the raikuda sort of thing yes you're going to get and uh, you really need the original pickups in my, my opinion the the replicas are fine but there's nothing quite like the originals. And and this as well, I kind of based the whole rig around these guitars, these kind of two guitars, the guy tone and this one. You know, everything here is kind of in mind for these two guitars because that's what I play live as well. So I'm gonna just show you my last guitar for this rig. Okay, the last guitar um, that I use, because I tend to use three guitars. So normally, if I'm not using this particular guitar, I use a Telecaster. Um, I've got a few tellies um, and they've got gold foils on them and flat round strings and whatever. But um, generally, 
I'm going to be using this guitar because this is actually the guitar that the famous um, Mali and Sahara Desert guy called Alafagatori used. These are very, very rare and almost impossible to get hold of one. I've been waiting years to find one. Um, and I did find one, this one recently. Um, what's really unique about it is, of course, you can't hear much there, but if you flick the switch, as you can see, it's got a battery and a speaker, so you can actually um, strum this out in the Sahara Desert, and the fact that you've got no electricity will not hinder you. Um, this is, you know, because some of the music I do is kind of a bit African-influenced, that style of guitar, I use some different tunings on this, which are kind of like the African um, blues, sort of what I call the African blues tunings, which Alef Agatori used. And um, so this guitar is really just set up to play that style, as opposed to the, the Gaia tone, which I use for more the Cuban Latin style. But that the, the Gaia tones in, in standard tuning, whereas this guitar here is in its own tuning, um, specifically to play that style. It's got, it's a very unique voice because you know, because of just the, the, the weirdness of it, but also it's got one pickup in the bridge. You don't have a neck pickup. So it's quite a trebly sound, and, and that's the Alifakatori sound, and you can only really get it with this guitar. So um, that's the amazing thing about it. Now, I do have um, another guitar which was made for me, which kind of replicates the Alifakatori guitar, and that's made by um, Chapter Guitars, based out of London, England. And this is all made with African woods. This is a beautiful guitar. So I'll, I'll kind of rotate these two, these two guitars. Um, I'll, I'll take one of them for this, the African sort of style blues that I do in the set. So that's kind of basically the whole rig for the world music sort of stuff I do. I mean, it's pretty simple, but some of the, some of the, the, the stuff is a little bit, um, some of the stuff is a bit strange. But, um, you know, this is kind of a lot of research. This is down to a lot of research and really, you know, just tweaking things, tweaking speakers and, and these lights. Are, one thing I haven't really talked about is the speaker cabinets. And these speaker cabinets are really, really cool speaker. They're quite light because really I'm, I'm going to be moving stuff into cars or, you know, off stages. I, you know, I don't have a guitar tech or anything, so I've got to carry this stuff. So I wanted something cabs really, really lightweight and sounded good. So... Um, and I was helped out by Jesse from Lazy J Amps, kind of the 50s style. So it goes well with the film of sounds. And um, yeah, and it's just about tweaking, you know, finding the right speaker. Because a lot of people think, oh, get an amp and that's it. No, there's so many things you can tweak, you know, the tubes. And the speakers really do make a huge difference if you want to change your sound. You know, think about changing the speakers.